Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word, and today that word is opportunity. Opportunity. Now I know a lot of, we've gone back and forth, uh, depending on where we're at and what, what book we're in, on um, looking at prayer is where this all started, our theme of faith this year, and then also looking as we're just going, uh, you know, through the Bible in order, and now we're in the book of Ezra. And so we'll point out a couple of things this week, just going to deal uh, with a couple of verses in each chapter. Uh, so chapters one through five this week. So I encourage you to be reading along with us. And uh, as always, I'm just going to point out certain parts of it. But uh, today, starting in Ezra chapter one, the reason I have used this word opportunity is because you find out what's going on. Right. If you read the end of Second Chronicles, you see a decree uh, that is uh, echoed here. You see this decree that is allowing the people to go back to rebuild the temple. Now, for that, that's uh, the basis of the book of Ezra. That's a lot of what you see, the interaction of things going on and, and the things that they face. And uh, we'll see this as Ezra is tied uh, very closely to the book of Nehemiah as well. And uh, this brings in a lot of other books, as you'll see this week. Um, so just the opportunity that I want us to think about is when yeah, you know, we may not have a, a decree going out for us to go back and rebuild something. But what we need to understand is that there are times where God allows an opportunity right here specifically for his will to be accomplished, uh, to fulfill his word and his promises. And we know they're not going to return void and we know his promises are not empty. So if we know that, then when we hear something that sounds like, man, this is awesome then we need to take advantage of the opportunity that we've been given. Um, I know like even right now in our nation, a lot of discussion of, uh, of Roe versus Wade and how that's going in the Supreme Court and, and what decision may be made with that. Now, you think about that, if, if something like that is overturned and an opportunity that it gives us as believers to, again, voice not our opinions, but God's stance on an issue like abortion that we fight for those who cannot fight for themselves. So that's just that's just one example among many that that could happen that we could hear some proclamation and hear some of some opportunity but let's not waste the opportunity. Right? Let's strike while the iron is hot as the old saying is. So today we're going to see that the opportunity that the Israelite people were going to have and then as we follow on through the book of Ezra we'll see if they took advantage of it or not. So starting in verse 1 today, and I'm going to just read down to verse 4. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of, the, of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me. And he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May his God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock besides the free will offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Now, you know, you just listen to this and it would almost sound like he was a converted, right? But I love how it starts there in verse one that said that God had put it in his mind. And I think even in this, he probably couldn't even understand. Looking back, he maybe was thinking, what, what was I thinking? I don't even know why I made that decision. Those who were closest to it may be thinking, why are you making this decision? Those who come later in opposition to him are basically saying, King, why did you make this decision? Do you not understand what's going on and what's being allowed to happen? But the whole point is, is that it's so that the word of God would be fulfilled, right? That the prophet Jeremiah had given, he said that it was only going to last for 70 years. He also said that the temple was going to be rebuilt. And, and so with all of this going on, he knew it had to be coming true. And so God uses the king, uses Cyrus, king of Persia, to do just that. That's a great opportunity. As we'll know, we'll find out if you, from the book of uh, Nehemiah, you know, he has an opportunity there to speak before the king and he takes advantage of it. 
And Ezra, as we're going to find out through the book of Ezra, we're going to see what the people do with this opportunity. But today, I just want just that to be in the background of everything going on in your life. It may be God has given you an opportunity today, an opportunity to witness, an opportunity to share his love and his gospel message. Maybe share a testimony about something God has done in your life. Whatever the case may be, don't squander that opportunity today. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.